Binnen één minuutje starten we voor de mensen die al aanwezig zijn. Uh, goedenavond, welkom bij een nieuwe webinar. Uh, deze keer met uh, Jiri Popelka. Um, deze webinar zal ongeveer een klein uurtje duren, dus iets minder lang dan anders. Um, maar het was echt nuttig om ook dit topic aan te uh, raken. Um, ik heb hier al eens over gesproken en hij is inderdaad, hè, en het woord staat er in de titel, hij is echt gepassioneerd in het volle bal en het volle bal voor de kinderen. Ik wil even meegeven dat deze webinar um, meetelt voor de verlenging van de coach licentie J. Er um, zal in de loop van de webinar daarvoor een aanwezigheidslink worden geplaatst in de chat. En dan het laatste, je kan um, vragen stellen. We hebben afgesproken dat deze vragen op het einde van de presentatie worden behandeld. Um, je kan die in de chat plaatsen, maar misschien is het nuttig om die enkel um, naar mij te sturen. Dus je kan via de chat uh, richting iedereen, maar je kan ook richting uh, mezelf. Goed, en dan stel ik voor dat we eraan gaan beginnen. Uh, good evening, Jerry. Thank you for being here. Um, thank you for bringing your passion. And um, the floor is yours. It's totally up to you now. Okay, so thank you, Christophe. And uh, I would like to uh, say hello to all the participants of, uh, your, of your webinars. I'm glad that you invite me into your into your project uh, that you are speaking with the famous uh, volleyball coaches and I'm honored that I can be one of your guests uh, to speak about volleyball uh, and uh, we agree that I will speak about uh, about uh, young kids uh, how to build passion in volleyball for for them how to how to engage them how to how to how to not uh, uh, speak only about the technical part of the volleyball that uh, we have these volleyball skills and then we have uh, practices and I don't want to uh, cover too much about like uh, volleyball specific uh, specific uh, questions uh, because uh, uh, I want to touch uh, something else and I will guide you through my presentation which I hope uh, will not be uh, will not be uh, boring so I will start uh, with my uh, presentation i want i have a few points uh, so i would like to tell you something about me about volleyball i will speak also about recruit recruitment and parents uh, about the kids today uh, what i miss what i miss uh, in a uh, in today's life of the kids uh, what i want that, uh, that the kids have uh, volleyball in heart and uh, something about the the structure of the of my trainings of the training structure that i think that it's uh, beneficial for for the kids, uh, what is uh, like uh, in my eyes the crucial goal of uh, of the coach uh, when the, the the kids are starting to play volleyball? What is my goal? Uh, what about something about the passion? And at the end, uh, some uh, few points. Uh, so, who am I? I am um, ex professional volleyball player. I spent uh, many years. Uh, in a lot of countries, I, I'm glad that I could spend the uh, first two years uh, of my uh, foreign journeys uh, in Belgium. I played in Mosaic and maybe some of you know me, but most of you, I think, uh, don't remember me because it was 20 years ago. But I remember it was a great time. So we won two times the title with Mosaic. But after that, I continue my journey in many countries uh, with the national team. I played uh, three world championships. Uh, I was not best volleyball player at the board, but I like to play volleyball and I played on as the opposite in the beginning of my career and at the end I played a spiker even if my reception was never perfect, uh, but I like to play and I want now to bring all my experience or all what volleyball gave me back uh, to volleyball. So this is uh, this was my this was my past and uh, also when I start when I played volleyball, I um, I did not only play volleyball because uh, I played uh, one year in Russia and it was very cold so uh, I decided with my wife to create a volleyball website because the, at the time at 2004 there was not so much information about volleyball so we created volley country project and uh, from the time uh, we have more than uh, 34 million uh, page views or views uh, on our website. Uh, we have uh, accomplished uh, more than 150,000 uh, fans on social sites. I will speak about them more. 
also we are uh, having some uh, online courses with the famous coaches uh, and uh, so also two courses about mini volleyball how to how to start with mini volleyball and uh, we were organizing a uh, world volleyball coaches show which was a great uh, conference or clinic in Czech Republic but uh, due to the covid uh, we could not uh, do it for two years but uh, in 2019 for example, we made it in Czech Republic in Ostrava and more than 250, uh, 240 participants from 15 countries came and we had uh, Javier Weber, Massimo Barbolini as a coaches and uh, I was really glad that uh, we could have such a big names uh, and I believe that uh, in future we can uh, we can continue with this project. Moreover, I was uh, after I uh, quit with my professional career, I was uh, four years national team uh, manager of the Czech women and men team. So I saw only not from uh, the player perspective, the, the national team. Uh, then I started uh, in Czech Republic to, uh, with the project of uh, school volleyball leagues, uh, like uh, college volleyball leagues, high school volleyball league, and I have plans also to start elementary volleyball leagues. It's not like a competition for the normal uh, uh, normal uh, national uh, federation uh, leagues because we play mix. Uh, we play uh, always uh, at least uh, two girls has to be on the court. And I want to make it more like a social. We are not uh, uh, aiming for some high results. We want that they spend a good uh, time. So we are not uh, making uh, every week uh, some games. So we are playing tournaments, but uh, it has a good uh, good reach because uh, before the before the COVID, I had uh, about 600 students playing these leagues. And I believe that in future, if there is not COVID, uh, it will be even more. Uh, then also uh, I was uh, involved in mini volleyball because I was uh, president of our regional federation, mini federation in uh, South Bohemian region. And we were organizing uh, uh, big uh, tournaments, uh, mini volleyball tournaments. I don't want to share with you or I, I would uh, prefer not uh, to share uh, video from this tournament because video is not good um, through Zoom to, to, to transfer. But these tournaments were very big. Uh, it was about 500 kids playing there, 400 or 500 games uh, by seven or eight minutes. So I saw this uh, this joy uh, in the kids' uh, eyes, and I really like it from the time. And moreover, at the end, uh, three years ago, we we founded a uh, own volleyball club with my wife. Uh, we call it uh, School of Volleyball, and uh, we would like to. Uh, teach and learn and spend the time with the kids and our goal is not to only win and to make some uh, very good uh, league players or national team play, uh, players uh, we want to spend time with the kids and teach everybody basic of volleyball so this is our this is our um, this is our journey and uh, that was uh, uh, about me moreover uh, i think uh, some of you may be interested in uh, in higher level of volleyball because i have uh, uh, two youtube uh, channels uh, one is in english one is in Czech. this is in english and uh, i see it that uh, in one on one or one uh, one year and few months uh, uh, there are more than 100 videos from me some are i think very interested uh, and uh, you can follow it uh, if you want uh, you can also share your opinions uh, in this video but i this this is not about me I want to speak about volleyball because volleyball in my eyes is uh, uh, the best sport. Of course, I'm not objective. Uh, I think that volleyball is uh, the best team sport. Uh, the best team uh, is uh, because uh, you cannot win by uh, alone. Uh, you cannot win. Uh, one player will not win championship. Uh, one player will not win uh, Olympic uh, games. Uh, one player is uh, in my eyes important, but always the team is team is winning. And uh, this is my point of view on uh, volleyball. And I want to, as I said, uh, to to give uh, volleyball back uh, what uh, what what I what I experience and what I what I receive uh, in my career. But on the other hand, volleyball is not uh, for the kids only one option because uh, we are in a new age and uh, there are a lot of uh, other sports uh, which are our competition. And we have to fight in a fair play with uh, other sports. It's not about uh, that. Uh, all the tall uh, boys and girls uh, will want uh, to play volleyball because there are other uh, other teams like football. I think and football is the most important and most popular sport on the world because in my eyes, it's uh, a little bit easier to learn it in the beginning than volleyball because for volleyball, you need 
at least uh, one or two years to to play some volleyball. But on the other hand, I don't, I don't say that uh, football is a bad sport, especially for 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 boys. And for the girls, uh, it's similar. For the girls, we have to also fight with other sports. Uh, in Czech Republic, for example, very popular is uh, floorball or basketball or, or or handball. And volleyball is one of the three or five sports uh, that, that are uh, that are that are for the girls. I think uh, very good. So this was about the competitions. And uh, uh, when we are as a coaches. Uh, we have uh, in our mind uh, the volleyball and uh, i think it's uh, good to have uh, good to know about the uh, volleyball because otherwise we would not be good coaches if we don't know all volleyball skills and uh, we are working on these skills on our practices so uh, we want to play good volleyball and we know that if we have some uh, some uh, some lack in attacking or if we don't serve well then the other the other team will play better and uh, will beat us so we are working on this uh, on these uh, skills and I think it's not only about these skills because uh, I built this chart uh, and the second one uh, for myself and for others uh, because volleyball is very complicated in my eyes uh, because uh, in volleyball we are always under big pressure because there is a pressure from the opponent and there is a big pressure from the time. We don't have a time as uh, in football or in hockey in basket to catch ball to catch the uh, to stop the action we have we always have to play so this is uh, one of the uh, important point for me that that's why i think that volleyball is very very difficult and also we have to take care about the fitness uh, tactics uh, coordination personality body build regeneration if we want to really uh, uh show our players uh, everything about volleyball it's like a, a work for 10 years uh, at least but uh, this is, I think, our coach view. This is uh, what we want as a coaches, and uh, I don't think that it's the it's the best uh, idea to start with this uh, from the from the small kids. Of course, we can we cannot practice uh, we can we cannot practice only only one skill. But on the other hand, uh, we should focus uh, more on the on the kids. Uh, and uh, before I start with this, I want to sp uh, touch uh, about the rec recruitment and uh, parents because this is uh, the pre prerequisite for us. Uh, we cannot uh, practice uh, with the kids if we don't have the kids on the practice. And we have to make a uh, recruitment. Every team is doing, every club is doing rec recruitment. And this recruitment is uh, sometimes uh, sometimes aimed on the, on the kids, uh, sometimes aimed uh, on the parents. Uh, and but on the other hand, uh, we cannot uh, uh, just uh, we cannot just uh, recruit uh, kids. Uh, we have to work with uh, the family. I think the family is uh, the most important in many many areas, and also for the sport and for the for the volleyball for other sports. The family is uh, one of the basics. And if we really want to bring the kids uh, to the practice, uh, we cannot uh, skip this part, and we have to also like communicate uh, with not only the kids but uh, with the parents because it's in the beginning i think uh, very important and uh, i see it uh, from my own experience that uh, of course we are making uh, recruitment we go to the schools or we are organizing some events uh, when uh, when the when the kids uh, can see volleyball when we can uh, show them some exercise but uh, i think uh, the kids are only one part uh, of the recruitment uh, and parents uh, I know that uh, many clubs are doing like special events uh, for the parents that they invite them. Then, but on the other hand, uh, I see from my own perspective that it's very effective to target uh, parents on uh, social sites, and uh, I especially not, in, not didn't include uh, Twitter and TikTok. I think TikTok is not uh, right now the the right. Um, the right network for uh, for for parents because it's for the younger people and for for youngsters and i didn't also include it uh, twitter because from my own experience we have more than i think 13000 people on twitter like followers but twitter uh, the the engagement and the reach is very low so i from my own experience i know that it's very good working uh, uh, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, and uh, these three channels uh, should uh, every club uh, use in this uh, recruitment because uh, without them, it's very limited. Uh, if you have a website, and I believe all the clubs have now websites, you know, to find some website about volleyball, it's uh, you are targeting, or you can uh, you can get only I think one or two persons from ten. 
But if you make a good uh, advertisement on social websites, on social sites like Facebook or Instagram, you can reach uh, thousands of people in your region, in your city, and they will see your advertisement, your your offer to 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 their kids to play volleyball. And this way, I think it's a very uh, very easy not easy it, it can cost you some money but it's easier way to to sh to show them that uh, you want to uh, you want to work with them uh, with their kids but uh, i uh, i don't want to too much uh, too much uh, go deep into the, this uh, social social network uh, world kids today in my eyes are the same as uh, as uh, as they as, as we were as uh, as uh, the kids were for the i don't know 100 200 years they are still kids they have still the same body they have still the same uh, brain they have still the same uh, same problems they are still very cheerful they are you know sometimes fighting sometimes they are listening sometimes they are you know not happy sometimes they are happy and i think the kids today are the same but uh, on the other hand, uh, they, uh, there is a new, uh, new age, and uh, with this new age, uh, you can see this picture. And the kids are not the same in the spending of their time. They have these abilities of uh, phones, tablets, uh, and games. So they are spending a lot of times so on these uh, modern, uh, modern applications because it's uh, easier to just take the phone or to take a tablet or iPad and play some games. And uh, uh, I think it's one of the things that we have to think about all the time because uh, even me, even everybody, we are like a species that if we can do something more easier, we will do it. Uh, we are kind of uh, lazy uh, in this uh, effort. If we can do something what is not so much painful, we will do it. Uh, and the kids, for the, the kids, the the phones and uh, the applications and the games are the very fast, uh, very fast uh, fun, and uh, we cannot uh, live without it. And uh, on the other hand, if I when I speak with some coaches and they say we don't like it, we we don't allow you know the kids to to touch the phone uh, one week. Uh, I think it's like the with the with the. Uh, with the grown man, if you are used to, to drink coffee and somebody will tell you that you cannot drink coffee, then you will not be happy. And this, the same is with the kids. On the other hand, I understand the parents and everybody that uh, there should be some some limits. But uh, without the phone, without the game, so we cannot uh, we cannot live. And on the other hand, uh, now the age is uh, specific that. Uh, uh, the kids uh, are like having a strict uh, program in the in the morning uh, till the two till the two or three o'clock. They are spending time in the school. In the school, there is always more and more what to learn, and we as a parents uh, want uh, from them more and more. So they are really like a, like a kind of workers that uh, they are going to the school, and uh, I think that uh, most of the schools uh, uh, are not so great that they don't enjoy so much the time and also the. Uh, what they have to learn sometimes they have to only to memorize but i don't want to speak about uh, about the school system and uh, in general i just want to say that uh, the kids are spending the time like uh, uh, for a long uh, hours uh, in the school and then they come uh, home and uh, we as a parents are sometimes you know tired from uh, from our work sometimes we are not happy with their uh, with their performance in the school sometimes you know they do something bad and uh, we are also um driving the kids uh, many times into the negative uh, emotions which is uh, of course part of the life but sometimes it's uh, it's too much and uh, the next uh, time when they are spending that uh, is in the car yeah i can tell you that in czech republic and i think you will angry, uh, agree with me that in belgium is the same if you want uh, the kid to have some sports you take the car you go somewhere and uh, the 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 kid is start, uh, this, the kid is spending in car 20 40 one hour two hours per day and i think this uh, this time in the car it's uh, necessary because uh, uh, because uh, the clubs are not uh, nearby by 200 meters uh, from our house but on the other hand it's uh, it's uh, it's like uh, not used uh, time for the kids uh, because uh, uh, when we are going for all these uh, schools, then uh, we go to the practice by the car. They will go to the practice, and in the evening they are uh, tired. They are tired not only from the the movement itself, but uh, most of the times uh, from the from the everyday everyday routine. And I would like to change it somehow because uh, 
This is the picture that uh, you don't see anymore in the on the streets in the city, uh, in Czech Republic. Uh, almost uh, nobody is now spending time uh, alone uh, outside. Uh, we are afraid as our as as a parents uh, to 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 leave uh, uh, our kids outside because there are threats. There are a lot of cars. There is uh, something else, and I think this is a big. Uh, big change uh, that we have to accept that uh, 20 years, 30 years ago, everybody was spending uh, time uh, uh, outside. Everybody was uh, crawling the trees. Everybody was running. Everybody was playing football, hockey and other sports. And now we don't have these opportunities or the kids uh, doesn't have these opportunities. So I see that uh, in the day, there is not so much uh, fun and movement. Uh, there is like a uh, the things that, uh, that that the kids have to do, they have to go to the school, then they go uh, to the practice. Uh, sometimes the practice is good, sometimes it's not good. But at the end, uh, in the evening, they are uh, most of the times, uh, in my eyes, uh, not uh, as uh, as happy or as uh, as uh, how to say it. Uh, they didn't enjoy the day as as I would like to, uh, as I would uh, want to. So uh, I think that uh, we should make a difference uh, in volleyball, not only because uh, we want that they play volleyball, but we also want to be different uh, from the other sports. We want to be better than other sports. We want to have the best kids. We want to have as much as kids as possible. And we should try to make uh, the, the difference uh, that uh, they the kids are coming to the, our practices that they know that they will have a fun fun that they know that they will have a good movement uh, that they know that uh, they will spend a good time and they know that uh, they will want to come uh, want to come again because uh, i think uh, that uh, this is our like uh, one of the goals that uh, we should uh, try to really bring the volleyball into the heart of uh, every kid uh, that uh, everybody is not only going to the practice because uh, uh, I am the, your dad, you have to go to the volleyball because I was volleyball player or uh, the your uh, your friend is going to volleyball, so you go to volleyball or somebody will tell two kids that uh, they have to go to volleyball. They have to go to volleyball because they want to go because they like volleyball. And this is our, I think, one of the most important mission to bring the kids uh, to this state that uh, no matter no matter what uh, what others say, they just come to the volleyball. And at the end, uh, I want that uh, they have really like a volleyball in their heart, that it doesn't matter if they are, you know, playing outside on the beach, if they are 15 years old or 50 years old, they just like to play volleyball because they have it in their heart and it will not uh, disappear because they start to like it in the beginning and they, this journey will continue for, for many years. And uh, that's why I think that uh, in the beginning, uh, we should think about the training structure. I don't want to uh, speak too much about uh, that uh, we should uh, set the ball in the beginning, that we should use the wall or there should be some uh, some other specific uh, things. I am just I will just tell you my experience or what I'm using in my trainings. So uh, I think that uh, you will agree with me that uh, every volleyball practice is somehow structured. This is a kind of the... Uh, chart that uh, in the beginning of the practice we are always a little bit uh, speaking then uh, the kids are then the kids are you know warming up uh, we are using some uh, some uh, some running some stretching uh, then we do our exercises what we want to do we are doing uh, many things uh, for them you know to develop their their uh, their volley not only volleyball capacities but also how to move how to catch how to throw in the beginning i'm speaking mostly about now kids from 6 to 12 years old and this is uh, our point of view. This is our this is our um, this is our view from the point of the coaches that we have our plan. We know where we want to go. We want to, how we want to play volleyball or how we want to teach them volleyball. And this is uh, our like normal standard uh, standard uh, expectations uh, from the from the practice. But on the other hand, I think that we should work a lot with the emotions, uh, especially in the first years of the. Of the of the kids that are uh, attending our coach, uh, our um, our practices, and uh, I like to use this uh, kind of a kind of a system that I that I one time hear from Italian coaches. I don't remember from which club that uh, in the beginning of the practice I try to use uh, some exercise, some fun game that is uh, full of full of emotions, and after the I don't know. Five ten minutes, uh, the kids are like uh, 
enjoying the game and uh, they start to be not tired but they are already emotionally like uh, on the high level so after that uh, i'm i have the time to to lower this uh, emotional level and i have time to use uh, other other things uh, in my practices but at the end of the practice i also want that they play some game that they are leaving the practice like emotionally really excited and they will know that uh, next time uh, when they come to the practice all again they will they will they will receive emotions so my uh, my training structure is uh, is uh, built that uh, in the beginning i'm uh, focusing uh, to uh, to to start the emotions then comes after 10 15 minutes uh, the time for me as a coach to 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 play volleyball to 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 develop their skills and at the end again i am uh, i'm trying to think or to uh, to finish the practice uh, with the emotions of course that it all depends on the length of the of the practices but i see that if you have uh, one hour of the practice with these kids from 6 to 12 years old and we are li really like uh, playing uh, the uh, joyful games but which, which which are really like uh, movement uh, uh, that they have to move a lot and then we if you are practicing and we are doing some runs that one hour one hour 30 is enough for them so uh, this uh, this is like uh, my training structure and my goal of this uh, practice is uh, to have uh, the kid uh, satisfied after the first practice and come to my second practice because I this is uh, most important for me that uh, if there is a, a completely new boy or girl coming to my practice I really want that that uh, he or she comes to the second practice and this is uh, my goal in the beginning but it's not only about the beginning my my goal is uh, that uh, they are satisfied they are happy they like to come for every every practice and uh, this is like uh, uh, what I am uh, focusing on that I want really that uh, they like to come to the practice uh, that they like to come to to me to train with me and uh, for me it's uh, much important in the beginning uh, to have a good attendance rate than to win some games because I understand that many coaches uh, not only in Czech Republic uh, worldwide are very focused on uh, their personal like achievement and achievement in sports uh, as a coach is uh, achieved not by you because you are not playing you are just coaching so sometimes the coaches want to win and uh, for me in the beginning it's a uh, much more important and a uh, better goal to have a good attendance because if i have a good attendance if i have a 80 percent 70 percent 90 percent attendance then i know that the that the, that the kids uh, like to come to the practice and i have also a bigger chance to teach them volleyball and uh, for me it's not only about uh, the the goal that i want uh, that they come uh, to the practice every time it's just like a way it's like never ending way because uh, we can uh, improve all the time even if i am now 40 years old and i want to play volleyball i have some uh, some some problems and i can i can improve myself and i want to think about this uh, also for the kids that uh, it's not about just one year it's about uh, it's not about two years it's about longer period and also it's not only about one way that we have to use uh, one way i think there are many ways and i experienced this uh, in my career that uh, in italy the coaches were a little bit different than in uh, belgium in france in poland in argentina in russia in turkey so it's not only about one uh, ideal way we have to find as many ways as possible how to get this uh, volleyball into the heart uh, of the of the small kids and on the other hand uh, it's uh, again uh, connected with uh, new technology because uh, from my experience I know that uh, under 12 years uh, you can really work with the kids uh, uh, with the balls uh, with the hole uh, there is not so much uh, uh, I don't recommend so much uh, interactions on um, uh, on social sites because at that age they are not allowed to to be uh, like uh, or like on uh, Facebook or on Instagram and I don't want at the time to tell them that uh, they have to go to some application because they are really like uh, spending a lot of time on some games and uh, I think it's the time uh, from the 12 years old uh, approximately that uh, we are using in our club and I think I believe that every club should have a good uh, application uh, on the mobile phone that uh, it's not only about the attendance uh, there should be also kind of the 
measurement of the of the development of the kids uh, i don't like to give some uh, mark that uh, you have to play volleyball and at the end uh, like in the school you will get uh, you will get mark one one two one two i like more uh, star system or star system i think is uh, is the best option or some kind of the stickers uh, you achieve this you go up you go up but uh, i think uh, the application is very important at that age, at that age or over 12 years and also from that uh, each, from the, from that year from from that years uh, uh, you should be very active on uh, social sites where are where are kids uh, now i don't have here tiktok but uh, uh, TikTok, I think, is also one of the applications, one, one of the social sites that uh, the 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 kids are consuming their the 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 images and uh, videos, and uh, I think it's good for, for the club to be on this uh, social sites because you are not only speaking to the girls uh, to the boys when they are on the practice, but you are also uh, they are spending time with you uh, outside. They are spending time when they are on their. Um, popular and favor applications so that's why i think this is only also one way that uh, we need uh, to accept uh, and to and to use uh, as the coaches and and the, and the clubs and at the end uh, i believe that uh, all these our our work all these uh, practices all these uh, uh, social sites meetings uh, games uh, should uh, should come into the passion because the passion is my is um, the, the strongest word the strongest feeling that we can have that if you have passion nothing can stop us as i said uh, in the beginning and passion i think is uh, the ultimate goal if i if i am really passionate about volleyball nothing can stop me and nothing can uh, nothing can tell me not to go to the practice or not or stop to stop with volleyball and uh, for me, it uh, the passion is not only about that I want to be the best uh, volleyball player in the world, that I want to win uh, Olympics, that I want to earn money. For me, the passion is uh, for every kid, for every adult that is uh, that is interested to play volleyball anywhere, everywhere, with uh, with uh, football ball somewhere, not even on the ground. This is the passion uh, in volleyball that I want to develop in uh, in our in our kids. I want that uh, they really think that uh, my volleyball is uh, my passion. This is like the the motto that we use uh, in our our practices. That they have to feel it that it's theirs, that it's inside them, and that uh, nobody can uh, take it from them. But also there is a long way to the passion uh, to 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 create this uh, feeling inside them. So in a summary, I think that uh, we should, uh, everybody should learn, get inspired uh, on YouTube, in uh, uh, read some books. Uh, we should think about uh, volleyball and other sports because there are other uh, competitors and we should be better. We should play, of course, fair play. But uh, I think we have a lot of uh, possibilities and way how to how to how to bring uh, this uh, not only talented but uh, the the kids uh, to the volleyball we should make uh, practices for the kids uh, not for the coaches we should also uh, always focus uh, that uh, the kids are uh, starting with volleyball uh, and they like to play volleyball and not about us that we want to see the progress in uh, in in passing or setting in two months also, we should, uh, as I said, uh, create some appealing recruitment uh, in the schools. We should be, it should be funny. We sh it should be a lot of games. Uh, but on the other hand, we cannot uh, skip these uh, social sites. And uh, there, uh, I think it's not only about the one week in the beginning of the school that we will make a recruitment, that we will make some flyer and we will uh, place it into the into the uh, into the social sites i believe that uh, we should do it all the year if you have some uh, uh, if you have some uh, some trainings if you have some games you should make a short uh, video or photos at least and uh, put them on the on the social website so the parents uh, potential parents of your kids uh, know about you not only by uh, coincidence by one uh, by 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 one event but uh, they should know that you are active uh, all the year this means also website and uh, short articles and uh, letting them know about your program about uh, your progress and uh, about your coaches so at the end uh, we should make a like a difference uh, in uh, volleyball that we should really like uh, be uh, uh, better than than the 
than the usual than the usual sports than the usual time that they spent uh, as a kids uh, in their free time they should uh, really feel that uh, we are better in like uh, not only like uh, better coaches but uh, they will spend our with our better time and uh, in the practice uh, as i said on my my advice is uh, to focus on emotion first and uh, practice uh, second because i believe that if we if we build these emotions that they know uh, from the beginning that there will be the game and at the end will be the game they really want to come uh, for the next practice and for the next practice and for the next practice and they are building this uh, this uh, this volleyball in the heart and uh, this should be our goal our goal should be more than the with Tori in the beginning, it should be happy returning uh, kids, and uh, they at the end it should be the volleyball way that they feel by themselves that it's uh, the best way for them that uh, they are going for the practices. They have uh, also our club uh, applications, and they are spending time on social and met, but they know that we are there for them. So at the end, uh, they really feel that uh, their volleyball or my volleyball is my passion and. Uh, Nothing uh, can stop me, nothing can change me, nothing can uh, influence me because I love volleyball and I want to continue this uh, journey for the rest uh, of my of my life. So this was uh, uh, my presentation and thank you for your watching. So now I will stop uh, sharing the screen if uh, Christoph agree. Yeah, it's okay. Thank you. Okay. So I did receive some questions. So um, first question, you're, you were talking about uh, the different kind of exercises and having fun, but what is your favorite kind of exercise? I know that, uh, I don't know how to call it in English, but we play it, uh, there are two or three games that we play. The one game is like this uh, uh, throwing and catching that you have to throw the ball to to, to hit somebody and they, he is going out of the field for the moment. If if I if I throw the ball to him and I am then uh, hit it, I go outside and he's coming back. Uh, I know that uh, the kids in Czech Republic uh, know this game. It's uh, kind of the preparatory game for the volleyball because it's good uh, for throwing. I am not allowing uh, or I I don't want the kids that they throw with the both hands. I want from the beginning they throw with the one hand. In the beginning, it's not easier because the ball is too big for them. But uh, on the other hand, uh, I, it's not only about this uh, throwing, but also about the catching. Uh, I'm uh, trying to build it then. Don't be afraid of the ball. Even if there is a, a strong hit, hit coming to you, try to catch it on your body. Don't start with your hands like this, but uh, catch it with your body. And uh, I see that the kids uh, like this uh, game. So uh, if we have some kind of voting, uh, they they prefer to, to play this game. Yeah, so it's uh, called dodgeball. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's dodgeball. It's uh, you are right. There was also the famous movie about this. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So um, in Belgium, we often use different materials for the exercises. Do you use materials for your exercise during practice? Yes, uh, we are trying to use uh, material. Not more. Most of the time, we are using uh, the the kids' ball from uh, from Mikasa. There are, you know. I think they are very good because they are not uh, losing the pressure after the time. There are some other marks, but these are good. They are soft. They are very pleasant to touch. And then we use a tennis ball, uh, especially for some uh, some uh, juggling or for some uh, for some like uh, throwing exercise. And then we are using uh, these uh, over balls and also some some cones for uh, for marking the. The playground or for marking the the some runs uh, yes there are many of these uh things uh, but uh, we as a as a small club so i can tell you that uh, we have now uh, for these uh, young kids uh, uh, uh sports hall or or i cannot i don't know if i can call it sports hall but uh, this uh this hall has the seven by 60 meters and we have uh, 16 to 18 kids, so uh, we don't want to bring so much of the of this stuff inside because then it's really crowded. You know, it's good for 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 the kids because they are touching a lot of balls, and no balls are going around uh, in the big hall. But on the other hand, uh, we 
are a little bit uh, lacking some uh, kind of the movement but for the for the older girls uh, and boys we are already uh, found uh, some uh, bigger hole which is uh, very good for 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 classic volleyball training and uh, other materials like uh, bicycle tires uh, hoops for example uh, if you want to create exercises with uh, rolling hoops with uh, etc do you use yeah, we this use kind it, of things? So, but we use it, but uh, not so often, not so often, because uh, as I said, uh, we are not uh, uh, in this uh, small space. So we don't have, uh, because if you if you make the net uh, and you have uh, eight couples standing like this, so we don't have, uh, you know, we are really like uh, one meter um, close to uh, close together. So uh, it's uh, limiting us in using uh, other materials and we are like uh, using the space as much as possible. But if we bring some of this material, then it's getting really like uh, crowded. Uh, yes, we would like to use it more, but on the other hand, it's um, in this uh, sports hall or in this uh, school hall, uh, very complicated. Mm -hmm. And can you tell something about uh, different play forms you like? Uh, for example, in Belgium, we have um, for the under 11, we have different play game forms, uh, two versus two and three versus three. Can you tell something about the different play forms in uh, Czech Republic? Yeah, in Czech Republic, we have like uh, five colors of mini volleyball. Mini volleyball is like a project of the Czech Volleyball Federation, very successful because otherwise uh, we would lose a lot of kids uh, from six, seven years old because normally volleyball was starting from 12 years old. But now we have this mini volleyball for about 20 years. So we have colors uh, from uh, yellow, orange, red, uh, green, blue, and each color is... Uh, connected with uh, specific rules in the beginning is just the throwing and catching and then at the end the last uh, the last color is like a three against three three against three volleyball and these uh, tournaments are very popular in Czech Republic for example when we or when the federation is organizing uh, uh, national team games so we always connect this uh, game with some big tournament where it's uh, 600 to 800 kicks uh, playing mini volleyball and in the evening they are coming to the to the like uh, national team games and it's like uh, they see their idols in the big in the morning they play their games and in the afternoon they can see this uh, this volleyball and i believe that this is a uh, good but i know that in uh, in Belgium, in Canada, in uh, in Japan, there are other kinds of the, these games. Uh, but most important for me is that uh, they are moving. And uh, of course, that each game has some uh, plus and some minus. So I think there is not like ideal system for, for this. And uh, we have to try many things, not only to play uh, like uh, one color in Czech Republic a uh, whole year and just try to win something. We should be more open and uh, learn from uh, from uh, from other from other schools and from other from other countries. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, this this color um, is it only organized as a tournament or also as a competition? No, no, no. It's a uh, no, no. It's uh, organized as a tournament, and we are uh, or federation and these regions does. We are playing uh, there. Yes, there. If you have a one game, the one game is uh, for seven to eight minutes. Uh, two or three kids are playing against each other. Then there is like a small scoreboard, and they they are pushing like uh, like a points. But at the end, we are not playing for the result because uh, there are I don't know ten uh, groups. Uh, there is like a champions group and vice champions group and master group and. Uh, a lot of groups but uh, for example in our region we always give everybody the same uh, like price it's not like a price it's it was a it was a cake it was a small uh, milkshake and uh, we are not uh, pushing the girls at the time uh, the, the boys and the girls to to the result but on the other hand i can say that uh, we had to uh, really cancel the the access uh, for the kids uh, to the playground because the 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 parents are were coming to and they were like a second and third referee and at that time and this time we don't want or federation doesn't want and I think this is the correct we don't want that something is interrupting the the play by itself and it's not good if the if the if some parent is going there and uh, just starting to argue it was out it was in you know it's 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 for the it's, it's, it's for, again for the emotions it's for the enjoyment uh, uh, for of, for the, of, of the kids. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, during the COVID period, the training sessions, yeah, this they they stopped. Did you organize some online training sessions for the children, or how did you deal uh, with this uh, COVID situation? 
Now this uh, COVID situation, uh, yes, uh, some period was uh, very bad that it was uh, completely, completely closed. We could not do anything. So we were, yes, uh, trying to make this uh, online session. But uh, at that time, you know, when we start, because we are three years old club, uh, you know, to reach the kids, which are seven, eight, 10, 11 years uh, was not uh, so easy. So uh, we, for, I think, uh, I don't know, three, four months, we did not practice with them. But, at the, but uh, on the other hand, uh, once the situation was a little bit better, I mean, the weather, I believe that uh, if you have more than 12 degrees outside, you can start to practice volleyball. So we started in the beginning of the April year ago with volleyball. We brought them to the big uh, playground. We said uh, that you have to be, you know, not inside, not, not close together. And we start to practice. And uh, this year it was a uh, very complicated uh, because with the mask uh, it's not easy to practice and we we saw that uh, more than 50 percent of the kids uh, did not uh, go to the practice not only from the from the fear of uh, get uh, COVID but also from this uh, uh, from this that uh, with mask uh, to run uh, to, to to practice is uh, not ideal and on the other hand uh, it was uh, for our for all the coaches, it was a big risk because uh, you, if you go as a coach for the practice and if you have two or three groups, then you are with 60, 60 kids. So all the coaches has to be vaccinated. The coach cannot be the one that will bring the COVID to you. So this would be really like a disaster for uh, for any club. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it was, it was and it is still a huge problem. So next question, how do you motivate the parents to help in the club? Uh, we are trying to bring for uh, what is good that uh, when there are these uh, tournaments, when there are these uh, mini volleyball tournaments, there are at least five or six in a um, in a year. So all the all the parents are going there because they want to see their their kids. So we are speaking with them, uh, but on the other hand, the parents are. I don't know if I can say it, but uh, the parents like to spend, a, to have a free time. Uh, some parents are really like uh, bringing the, the, the kid to the practice and they are glad that they will have uh, one hour or one hour of 30 free to go to, to the city, to go to the, to take a coffee. Some parents are very interested and they spend their time in the hall, but uh, in our hall, it's complicated, as I said, because it's very like uh, small, it's good for table tennis maybe, but not uh, for volleyball. So there is not so, such a big uh, opportunity for them to to go there and to watch the practices in the bigger bigger hall that we start to practice uh, from from several months ago it will be much better but to bring the activity of the of the coaches so we are uh, trying to communicate with them uh, very often we uh, we we are sending a kind of a newsletter so what will be when will we play we try to or my wife which is responsible for this uh, really uh, like young youth section we call everybody for example when there was a tournament and it was cancelled one uh, one day before my wife took a phone and called to 70 parents you know please don't come because you know the situation is like this so i think that we you have to be really like uh, kind uh, and uh, be ready to answer all the questions of the of the coach of the parents some questions you of course are not pleasant but on the other hand if you if the kids are having a good uh, good times if they say at home that they like the practices then then there is not so much uh, problems or not a situation with the with the parents and also uh, if you have this uh, application that you use then you can uh, let the uh, parents update it about the everything. They can see the schedule. They can see the the attendance. They can also uh, write you once in a while. But uh, this is like we are in even in this uh, application board. We are in the beginning, and we want to improve uh, in future a lot. Mm -hmm. So you're telling about the application. Is this uh, a free application? And, and what is the content? Uh, I know of that this? there are no, no, no. There are a lot of applications uh, which are which are on the market in Czech Republic. I think there are uh, three to four applications which are like uh, good for this uh, for this purpose. On the other hand, I have a very good uh, experience and it, it can be also promotion if you don't if you don't mind. Uh, there is I don't mind. I don't mind. OK, perfect. That's good. <laughs> I we are using application ProTrain app, uh, which is uh, like uh, built in Poland, but it's in many languages. And the uh, big advantage of this application, it's not about only classical about that you can schedule all the practices that the 
that the parents or the kids can say i can go to practice or i will i am i am not going you know that uh, you can also export some kind of the reports for the state if they give you some donation and uh, you have to show that uh, the kids were practicing that you can uh, keep all the all the results into the application but moreover this application is good because you can also create uh, your specific uh, specific uh, practices uh, so you can have uh, 20 kind of practices and it also depends on the quality of the coaches but if you have a new coach and uh, you want to tell them something uh, you can have for him like a script uh, where and what to practice and on the other hand I'm also using this because uh, this application is allowing to have uh, embed uh, videos inside. So uh, there are guides for our coaches uh, from our online courses, uh, how to how to speak with the parents, how to speak with the kids, how to organize the space. And this is, I think, very important, uh, uh, like part of the life. Uh, and this, uh, again, I will tell it, uh, say it, Pro Train App application is not free. It will cost you something, but it will save you so much time. And I, I don't say that this is the best application in the world, but I think any application which is capable uh, to help you in the beginning, you have to learn it. But at the end, it's saving your time and Time is the the only thing that we cannot uh, we cannot you know grow. So uh, I really suggest that uh, every club has uh, some kind of this uh, application because I from my own experience when I was a national team manager, we used uh, WhatsApp uh, for communication. Then we used uh, uh, Basecamp uh, for for task management, but. I think that it's too much base camp for for club. Of course, if you have a club and there are 20 people and they are not sitting in the same office, then it's good uh, to use base camp or Asana or some kind of uh, this project management tool. And on the other hand, uh, WhatsApp is very limited because you only t it's like communication, like like uh, group communication, but uh, it uh, lacks some uh, it lacks some um, some features. And on the other hand, uh, only Google Calendar. I think it's like a point, point, point. If you have an application which is like covering uh, these uh, four or five uh, features, then it's uh, then it's much better. And I would not, uh, you know, I would not uh, be afraid to spend uh, some money for it. Okay, thank you. Um, can you tell something about the training session? So in Belgium, um, when we uh, say to the coaches, okay, the exact training session is you have three parts of a training session so we have a general part with the general movement the the coordination then we have a specific part and a specific part is technical tactical part mm -hmm. and then we have the game part what is the structure of your training session uh yes um, our training of the structure training of the structure in my eyes it's not a uh, like a clearly divide it into three or four parts you know i'm trying to really as i said in the beginning to play some game then i want uh, that the kids are always touching the ball that we are doing exercises with the ball that they always touch the ball i don't like exercise that uh, i'm standing at the net and i'm throwing the ball to one and he's uh, passing to me and then there are 10 more kids uh, standing behind so i'm trying to make the as, as much uh, touches as possible so this is like a technical part, which is very important. And I give this a maximum, uh, maximum like priority uh, that uh, everybody is, you know, starting to feel the ball. And it's uh, easier to start uh, with the fingers, with the passing than with the bump, because bump is uh, more complicated uh, for, my, for me. In the beginning, I always start also uh, from the catching, throwing, and I start and I want that uh, the kids uh, will learn uh, how to hit the ball, how to, how to smash the ball, not not over the net but we are uh, attacking uh, to the floor to the to the wall to the to the basket just to just to aim and then i am always uh, doing uh, 10 minutes of some uh, running uh, like uh, like races between two or two, three groups uh, two groups but it's not only about running they have to be also like uh, very smart they have to play with the tennis ball and run they have to play they have to run with the ball you know to follow the ball like kind of the basketball the dribbling they have to lie on the floor they have to you know they have to crawl they have to do like a not athletic uh, uh, training but uh, this uh, movement and this uh, this uh, how to how to feel all your body and uh, at the end again i'm uh, trying to make some uh, 
in in couples in in three exercise bees but uh, in this small hole uh, it's a uh, it's it's uh, limited and we are also limited uh, that uh, with the smallest uh, kids we have one hour of the practice because i don't know about the belgium but in czech republic in bigger cities it's a uh, too much uh, people and subjects which are interested to practice and too much uh, there is not so much uh, practice uh, or holes the space to spend the time so uh, everybody is having problem every every club is having pro problem uh, in, especially in Czech Budjurice to find a place uh, for practicing and uh, then there are practices also I know in some halls that are, that are only 45 minutes and if you have to build the court then 45 minutes is almost nothing then there are clubs that they are they have practices uh, uh 8 30 in the evening with the kids it's also not uh it's not also not good so we have to adjust our um, our training to the to the actual condition which are here and uh, it can be always better so that's uh that's one of the things that we need to improve a lot in our country close this session it was really interesting but to close this session um when I give workshops, when I give webinars, I have three keywords. My keywords are fun, move and learn. I want to know what are you three keywords and why? My three keywords uh, would be... A, a difficult question to end the session. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I think it's, uh, it's about kids. Kids uh, like passion. I think I have only one, uh, two, key, uh, two, two keywords. Uh, it's about kids, about the passion. It's mm -hmm. about kids that we have to think uh, as a coaches about the kids. And then it's a passion. It's a passion how to build uh, inside the kids the the passion uh, with uh, multiple ways, uh, multiple strategies. Uh, we have to be nice to the to the to the to boys, to the girls. We cannot come to the practice and just whistle or or shout. Uh, of course, we cannot be always like yes, everything is fine. We sometimes need to sometimes need to show that uh, you have to make uh, five push-ups if you if you do something that I didn't allow. Or I think. Uh, but we should think about first kids, not about we ourselves, about the coaches, and we should think about passion, how to build, uh, how to create passion inside them. If we achieve this, then everything else will be much easier and we will have time for our work, for our victories, for, for development. Uh, but uh, without this, uh, we will not have the kids on the practice and uh, we cannot achieve anything. Okay, thank you. I will address to the audience and then I will uh, come back for a little chat. Thank you. It sure. was really interesting to see and to hear your passion. And that's the most important thing, passion for volleyball. And I think if you can choose between uh, teaching kids, or teaching adults, that kids are more important than adults. Okay, thank you. Um, goed, dankjewel iedereen om op een vrijdagavond hierbij te zijn. Het was um, een last minute opportuniteit om Jiri Popelka uh, toch erbij te hebben. Um, en um, als je ziet met wat voor een passie hij spreekt, dan hoop ik dat jullie die passie ook zullen hebben om in de toekomst jullie kinderen te gaan begeleiden. Um, de aanwezigheden zijn geregistreerd. Ik geef alles door. Um, dit was dan ook de laatste webinar uh, van dit seizoen, wat niet wil zeggen dat we ermee uh, stoppen. Begin augustus zijn we terug met Hans Minten en ik heb er nog een paar klaarstaan voor in de nabije toekomst. Um, voor zij die bezig zijn aan de laatste examens, nog veel succes. Voor de anderen die in spanning aan het afwachten zijn op hun resultaat, we duimen mee. En voor de anderen wens ik een uh, fijn weekend, maar ook voor iedereen die in spanning aan het afwachten is hoor. Uh, voor iedereen een fijn weekend en voor binnenkort een fijne vakantie. Tot later. Dag.